So welcome uh, to this live stream. My name is Michael Rosa and I'm a designer from Czech Republic. I focused uh, on mainly on the new technology, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, 3D scan, and I'm combined them to like new media. So I uh, finished uh, Umprum, uh, which is Academy of Arts, Architecture and Design in Prague. Uh, there is uh, or there are three departments of design. Uh, I finished the industrial design one. Uh, uh, what the studio uh, at Umprum looks like? Um, this is like a typical uh, finish, typical projects uh, which we creating. It's industrial design, so we are shaping mainly. We focus on a transport design um, or even on a small product. Uh, <laughs> the first thing when I came to the studio, uh, I <laughs> just realized that. Mainly all of my uh, students or uh, colleagues were like sketching cars from like morning till night and I came here and with no driving license till now so I wouldn't uh, I would say it. I wouldn't fit in the religion of like industrial designers car lovers uh, for me like this is uh, 2020 Škoda and this is like 2015 and I was like okay for me maybe all of cars looks the same and I can see the difference uh, and why is that because uh, I'm thinking that like the whole field of industrial design it's called the shaping of industrial products and industrial design uh, and I focused on uh, industrial design because the shaping of industrial products is like only making better form like how it look uh, and sometimes it's not the solution because for example when you type kettle to Google uh, there is like thousands and thousands of different kettle designs uh, and I can for like 90% of them uh, like the shape wouldn't solve any problem at all it's just you know sometimes it's cheaper because it's plastic sometimes it's uh, expensive uh, but the difference is like really small for your user uh, and it's mainly because uh, mostly time there is in industrial design there is no space or room for any in, uh, innovations uh, it's sad to say it but mostly time it's because the company don't have enough money for like innovations there is no time for doing like deep research uh, that's, that's like pity when you're doing industrial design and at the end you are just shaping forms like do it the same as uh, concreation but cheaper that's what I don't want it to do in like you know uh, my uh, creative field so uh, for a start I will show you a little bit of my like shaping design career or the type of product what or how I think about designing the products and or design and I'll show you a few examples of my design uh, the first will be a bike rack uh, when you get the the task the first thing which came to my mind was how pe where people putting their bikes and mostly time it's tube some signs, street lights or railing that's basically where I put like my bike so the first idea was just to make a hole in a in a sign uh, and that's all you know people will put bike and will have a place where to lock them but once I was uh, at Umprum an industrial design studio I have to make you know make a product so I came with these uh, with these stands, which is just tube. tube. Uh, the next uh, example will be net nutcracker. Uh, like I was I was like, okay, the normal nutcracker which everybody owns is working pretty well. So, like, make it look better wouldn't like solve anything. Uh, the only <laughs> problem which I uh, have was. Sometimes the nut is so hard and maybe I'm just weak <laughs> and I don't have uh, enough enough power to 
crack it and I just get angry and wanted to smash it. So the, my final product was uh, like this kind of nutcracker where you are able to like, normally crack it. But when you have a harder one, uh, you are able to use the same product as a hammer and just smash it, you know, for like women, for example. So this little improvement. Or for example, this is like typical industrial design product, it's drone. And I was thinking about like carrying the drone because most of the time it's like really big thing. So the, the, the shape own would uh, be a package when you are able to put it in a, for example, bag and it will also carry the, the drone. Then you just came to a field, release it and uh, it should work. Uh, and for sure you can design like really nice um, concrete uh, bike rack or a really nice nutcracker but what I learned like through years that the solution is not always in in a shape or in better shape uh, of a product which leads me to uh, theme or to a task which we get uh, at Umprum and it was a uh, sex bot we have uh, uh, it was Robin Kopetsky who is uh, experimental philosopher and we will mm, we'll ha we get this uh, uh, like sex bot theme and we have we have to like think how the interaction interaction between a human or between a person and a robot in the future and you know um, the leisure way or sec how yeah basically how will people interact with robots uh, and I started thinking that uh, uh, it wouldn't need to be a person or some yeah, yeah <laughs> I didn't say it I'm from Czech Republic and my English is not the best one but I'm trying hard trust me so be pleased uh, yeah, what uh, what most of uh, my colleagues started to design was a design of a robot it, robot itself, how it looked, how it should looks like, and I came from like different way, and I started thinking about uh, how people interact with mobile phones, because that's mostly a robot right now which we interact the most, and I started thinking about likes, uh, because f most likes became like addiction obsession or a disease for some people and I found out that uh, for a lot of people uh, they like uh, literally enjoying getting likes and I s uh, found the study that for many being liked on social media is more important than being liked in reality and that can lead to a behavior and ability to enjoy life in the present or in the moment uh, a lot of people had like this uh, nomophobia, which is no mobile pho phobia, where people getting crazy when they are for like day without a mobile phone. Uh, and I want to reflect this modern society or this problem in my work. So I create a mobile app, which uh, collecting likes from uh, social media, from f Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, and so on, uh, and then se send them to a special uh, like vibrator or dildo, uh, and each like is like each like is impulse. So the people who don't know you make you pleasure, like literally. And I create this like video which show the whole the whole product yeah so people who don't know you make you pleasure uh, which they already do in on Instagram from a lot of people you know you put a photo and then you check in how much likes you get but now it makes you like literally pleasure 
Uh, and I wanted to show the extreme between intimacy and anonymity. Uh, and basically it was a mobile app which was sending likes from uh, social media to a vibrator and, or dildo and it just w vibrates. Uh, but once um, I was at the industrial design, I need to, uh, I need to uh, create some kind of product because uh, at the end they ask, and where is a physical model and where is a, where is a product? So I create the dildo, uh, or like the special one where each pulse is like each, each like is each pulse, but it should work without it, just the up. Uh, and that leads me to my final project at Umprum, my diploma project, uh, where something I chose Umprum because you know I spent most of the time there, uh, and I saw f like first year students came to school or even people f uh, at Erasmus came to school and they don't know anything about school if they wanted to search info about, for example, our uh, professors or you know, like uh, our teachers, pedagogues. Uh, yeah, they have to go through this, like to find a design, then they have to find the right department. When they find the department, they have to click on, on the studio and then to found the head of the studio and then like error came because uh, Umprum don't have any info or like the professors didn't upload them so you are an awesome guy or like first year student you wanted to get info about the professor or a teacher who teach in a different studio you go to our page and you didn't find nothing then you came to school like a newbie, and our school looks like this. Yeah, totally lost in <laughs> some space and a lot of trash. So you go go to page, like getting really really confused. So the result which which I wanted to create was this like information medium or information system, and my main goals was like awareness. Uh, collectivization and acclimatization students uh, in a building of Umprum and I wanted to give them the information like fast, fun way uh, and in an attractive way. I focus mainly what I already said uh, on a first year student, Erasmus guys and the middle school which is students who wanted to go to Umprum but they don't have those information so, so I came up with this uh, like matching game where each card will be one professor or one teacher or pedag one pedagogue and you'll get like all of those infos here on one you know little little page and it will be also the thing which I should give to uh, students who wanted to wanted to go there or in the first day of school, every student get a lot of papers, like how much credits they need to make, where they should go, and you know, a lot of information. And this little paper should be like another thing which will get the first day in, at school. And I also wanted my project to combine with this sign, which is a uh, sign, uh, which is. Uh, before each studio, which before each atelier, uh, each doors at school. Uh, so my so the process was uh, at first I need to create a, a head of each each professor. So I came from a door to door and I was scanning every professor. At what who is at school. Right now I'm scanning uh, at the hall. Yeah, I was scanning literally everywhere. I just going around the school with a bag, computer and 3D scanner and I was going around 3D scanning the faces, then doing a lot of post-production 
and that was basically my whole year just going around the school knocking at doors hello are you there okay should i create a 3d scan of your face and why and then you know a lot of a lot of speeches why i'm doing this 3d scans uh, so my whole year was just catching professors uh, and then when i have a lot of uh, all of the 3d scan uh, it came to post, post process where uh, yeah, I was for this scanning them, then I take a photo from front side, both sides, and then I was like making a post production from the photo. Yeah, sometimes I need a better photo, so I was using uh, uh, photos from internet, for example. Yeah, and here is the whole, the whole like making of video where I was go in at the end with a GoPro on the head because I wanted to show like everybody how hard it was. Yeah, here you can see the raw data and then a photo. And this is the tex textures of each head. Yeah, a lot of programming stuff. This is the final product. Basically, I create a mobile app which works with this uh, paper or matching game and also with a sign before each doors. And on each each marker will pop up different head, uh, which depends on before which door you are standing or uh, on which marker you are uh, like uh, putting your phone. I wanted to, the app would be working from the first time you came to school. So you came to school, download the app. It will show you the way to to the right studio, which you will choose from a menu. Yeah, here you can see. You will choose the navigation. You will find the destination. It, it will show you exactly where it is. This is the sign I was talking about. Yeah, the hub, the app, uh, the head, and the 3D scan will pop up, uh, and then you just tap on them, get information like information about the studio, about the uh, about the professor. You will yeah, this is the game, yeah. and you will get an information about the students. Uh, you will have uh, s links to all of uh, social media of each, uh, and that's basically my final final project at Umprum. Uh, yeah. uh, which is uh, a little bit funny because, as I told you, this is a typical industrial design studio. This is a typical product which uh, students are doing, like cars, trains. Uh, and I finished my <laughs> industrial design uh, studio with mobile app, which was like totally new for at, yeah, at least at Umprum, at least at our studio. Uh, and that's mainly because at Umprum, it's great school, but Umprum has no studio, studio which is focused purely on digital technology. Uh, so basically what I have to do was create my little own you know, place in the studio and to show uh, that yeah okay this is a way this is also a design like mobile mobile app and yeah, of course they were asking and where is a like physical model and is it still a design I was like yeah for sure it's design because I'm doing a solution for for like real problem which is at our school that 
students don't have information, they came to Prague to Umprum from different, uh, different cities, you know, different countries, for example, at uh, Erasm, uh, and they have only information about their studio, about the only one. Mostly time uh, students came from a school or graduated at Umprum and don't know anything about, for example, uh, architecture. Yeah, they, they study the uh, industrial design and students live in a bubble, you know, inside a school. And I want to give them the information like real in a fun way. And that's how I became maybe a mobile app designer. Uh, and I really like because it gives me uh, like really creative freedom, uh, which uh, I will show you in, on my personal project because this was a school project. Now the personal projects was a little bit different, but I was continuing on a path, uh, path of m like mobile design, augmented reality, and I really found myself into like this uh, technology. So the first thing will be package design. Um, I cooperate with the company Model Obali, Model Package, which uh, they are like lead uh, in Czech Republic for uh, package design. Uh, and we came with this idea of using augmented reality on top of uh, boxes. Uh, basically when I'm starting doing s uh, any project, it starts from a you know, a simple sketch. Uh, then I start to like rethink the idea, make it a little more clear. And this is the final final product where uh, each top of a, uh, of a box is a marker. And when you f put your mobile phone. On it there is a digital layer. And it was a uh, Christmas, Christmas present box where we wanted to show the idea. Yeah, so you, you get the box, you download the mobile app and then you'll see like, the digital layer. Here is a tutorial what you should do. And each each box has different digital layer and video. And it, it was just a showcase of uh, how the technology should be implemented in the real world. Because, for example, right now you get a new product, for example, um, beard trimmer and uh, you get the manual, manual where is a lot of uh, every info about the product how to use it and you know a lot of a lot of text and nobody's reading them so like this solution there should be a digital layer on the top of a box of the product you will just uh, take your mobile phone and get every info about it you can see uh, 3D model of it with animations, how to connect each parts, not only a sketch, how it's done now. So this is like the f yeah, for trust me, this is the future of how will package design work or at least uh, manuals. Because when right now when you buy IKEA, uh, uh, it has uh, like really good manuals, but if you can saw it right right in a place, how to how to build it, it will be much faster and trust me, much more, much easier. Yeah, the next uh, project, project will be this VR stand, which is quite new project. Um, uh, yeah, the Center Bohemian Innovation Center ask us, uh, why I'm saying us, because it asked me and uh, Herman Soufal, which is product design uh, studio really good, great guys. Uh, and they ask us that uh, in Bohemia, in central Bohemia, there is these five, uh, uh, how to say it, institutions which uh, are doing research in, 
in certain yeah, in central Bohemia, and they wanted to present them to to children at elementary school. Uh, but the problem is that uh, those institutions are doing really uh, like hard mm, stuff. So let's say it like this. Uh, for example, Biocef is doing research for uh, uh, for cancer. Yeah, they are finding the cure for cancer. For example, Ellie Beams uh, have owned the biggest uh, laser in Europe. Uh, yeah, Astronomical Institute has the biggest telescope and finding the exoplanet, which is planet uh, similar to to Earth, where people should live in the future, uh, and the University Center for Engineering Efficient Building are doing a box which you put, uh, uh, for example, in the Sahara, where is no no water at all, and then they keep or collect the water from from Earth, uh, from. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I can find the word from air, from air, yeah, from air. So it, it's like a really hard theme which we have to present or show children that there is this institution and they are doing this development or these researches and they are finding uh, something like really uh, needed. Uh, and basically, what would uh, what would uh, sits like Central Bohemian Innovation Center do? They creating uh, these rollups, and they will create the rollup, put it in a hall uh, in a school. Maybe they will print a poster in a notice board, and that's how they presenting. Uh, normally, they these uh, companies or these uh, institutions. And we came with this idea of creating uh, um, interactive stand, which will have a tablet inside, and in a tablet there will be virtual virtual um, space, virtual reality, and the students students should like interact with it, with it. Uh, getting information and finding information in like fine way. And really, uh, yeah, really finding the informations. And here is a preview on of some of those like VR scenes inside the tablet. Yeah, so the students w could manipulate with the stand. And here is uh, the laser, and they can uh, you know shoot with the laser, trying how it works, finding. Finding information, they can also get into into the lab of LED beams. And the next scene was inside uh, inside a vein. So the the child found themselves in a vein. They are finding the the. Cancer. Yeah, here is a cancer. They get information. What is cancer? How the the cure, uh, killing it, and and so on. And here is uh, yeah, here is uh, the scene in a space where uh, children are finding the exoplanet, finding what exoplanet is, uh, yeah, getting information about the institution. Yeah, of course. And the final product look like this. Yeah, here is uh, the scene inside. Oh. Yeah, and each uh, they stand in uh, classrooms on the hall, and the students should interact with it. Finding uh, the information and what we see, saw, uh, students who were really into it. Uh, trust me, more than in a poster or <laughs> this media. Yeah, so this was another example of my work. 
And then I came with the idea of this uh, digital layer on a label because right now the logo on or the label uh, works only as a face of a brand and I was thinking how to uh, hide or how to put more information in it and thanks to yeah, augmented reality we are able to place like a lot more than a single uh, logo and I came with the idea of putting the yeah, augmented reality on top of on top of the logo and thanks f thanks for augmented reality we are able to put information web page f links to different social media and here is a preview of app already working yeah, here is the history of the logo yeah it yeah, it should also collect the new product advertisement for example new shoes or new released shoes yeah here is a fun way of how to use it yeah, i'm trying to make for my presentations uh like videos mostly time because uh, it's sometimes it's quite hard to explain what i'm doing by uh, only by a picture so uh, at the end of each product or each uh, project I'm trying to rethink how to present it to for example social media and how to present it to people who never saw something like this but uh, trust me it's hard yeah uh, here is uh, like uh, AR architecture there is uh, Finep, which is development uh, brand, call it brand, uh, which are doing, uh, uh, which are doing buildings. Well, they are building buildings, uh, and they wanted to show those people who live uh, across the street how the new, how the new buildings will look like. So what I'm doing also is this visualization, but it's only one part of the project. Uh, because what they wanted to show them, how the light will interact with their building, because they need their sign that they are, they approved, they are okay with a, build, with a project. So I create this augmented reality, uh, tiny street where you can check out it. there is also the options of changing difference variation uh, yeah, check out the light by the slider in in a time you know from 1 to 4 pm yeah here you can see and you can check out the difference variations how how it Yeah, I will change the the light. Here is the whole day. Like the circle of sun through a whole day. And basically what they were used to do, they were doing uh, like real model uh, where some kind of modeler were modeling like each tree and each building but uh, yeah i found this solution much much better so at, at the end yeah, it it was <laughs> uh, yeah what i wanted to talk about is also uh, my uh, love to game boy or old games which also defines me in my work uh, and i'm like really big collector of game boy uh, and I found it uh, as an inspiration, uh, an inspiration in its limitation, which was uh, in a time. And for example, like clouds and bushes, which are the same thing in a Game Boy, uh, because they need to save uh, save a lot of space uh, or data in each game. So they were doing the same thing why I'm right now I'm talking about Game Boy because 
for me, a Game Boy game is something like augmented reality right now, because it's uh, like it's really new. The technology is not so powerful. Uh, the first games or first uh, like implementations of augmented reality is like really uh, cheap mostly time, uh, and it's it's the same what Game Boy used to be in compare to nowadays game or nowadays quality, uh, and uh, that's why I'm like playing these games, getting. Uh, getting yeah, what I told uh, inspiration I'm also trying to like develop my own augmented uh, augmented reality uh, Game Boy games so I'm doing the, this pixel art in Prague right now now you can so like umproom and also this gives me a lot of inspiration for then making uh, augmented reality because yeah what I told it's quite the same and sometimes I even combine the technology, like a pixel art or augmented reality, like, uh, for example, this uh, Instagram filter, which I made for people who don't own these old games. I create like blinking games. Yeah, when you are jumping over the enemies and getting, uh, getting more and more points. Uh, yeah, and maybe this will be the end of a presentation, but what I wanted to tell you that when uh, I was a little, if I wanted to create something like this, uh, I would need like really powerful uh, computer or have a lot of skills, which uh, I don't have any of those. But right now you, uh, uh, you have like those technology or the hardware which is able to create uh, anything what I showed you right in your pocket and yeah right now everybody should start to create for like right now just take your phone and everybody should create anything basically yeah and that's all from my presentation, but I was thinking about showing you maybe a like little tutorial how to create augmented reality app. Yeah, it will be face filter at uh, Instagram. And I wanted to prove my last point that you will only need a mobile phone to create something. Yeah, so Maybe I will move myself uh, here. Uh, and I will show you. And right now I'm using a tablet, but you are also able to use uh, any Android or iPhone device. You are also able to to run this app from a web browser, which is even cooler. It's called SculptGL. And when I was younger, just to start sculpting uh, in app will be like really hard. And now I'm, I'm able to sculpt inside a web browser on my on my mobile phone so I could you know go in a train or tram and start like modeling maybe I should put the intensity a little bit yeah Something you got the clue, but I'll switch to to a tablet because you know a pen. Yeah, you could put, uh, for example, mm -hmm. 
reference image inside what you wanted to start creating and then you just start sculpt on Android device, Android phone, tablet, which is like for me really crazy and then you just start to, to creating stuff. Yeah, let's say we wanted to create some kind of character. Yeah, just let make it really fast. Okay, so let's say we are okay with it. I can export it as OBJ. Okay, I call it. Okay, now I'll move back to to computer. Yeah, should we switch to uh, duplicate first I will download If I send it to the right place, <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, I just found out that I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, but 
so we can continue here I will just start the Spark Air Studio which is from Facebook for creating uh, uh, augmented reality filters uh, which is a really cool feature because there is already wait not working not yeah maybe yeah working cool yeah what okay but what I found I have this okay okay yeah here you can see there is a lot of presets or templates and what we wanted to do we wanted to make yeah, maybe head decoration it's called here I will just download the Wait a second. Okay. Right now we should be here. Yeah. I will download it. I'll put it inside. Hmm. Okay, something's wrong. <laughs> I wanted to show this. No, 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 it's there. It's it's here. And then we just drag and drop it here. Yeah. We'll make it smaller. Okay, import fail, we know. We'll stop it. Okay, I'll do these. I'll switch. And you can see we just model something and I'm, I'm able to try it you know right now in a minute it took me like how long just two minutes to model something inside like Android device and right now test it in a moment yeah I just found out that there is a problem with this make it smaller nice you can change the color for something red you can then texture it or whatever uh, here should be the 3d you get the, the point that right now like create anything it's it's really easy yeah so I think it's everything from my presentation and right now we something that we shouldn't switch and you can ask me for whatever you wanted to if there is already anything is there any questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, so we have a question from the audience, so I will read them. Uh, no.
Digital Technology Studio. How did you learn the 3D AR scanning, modeling, programming workflow? Did you have uh, to research it yourself? What resource would you recommend? Yeah, basically I have to learn everything by myself. Um, the first project uh, where I started doing VR was a cooperation with Škoda, where uh, we have this cooperation every year and at the end we create a model of car and I was like okay uh, is there uh, any way how to do it different because uh, the like creating the real car was really hard and time com consuming and I was like okay so the task was fit to digital I was like okay so let's make it digitally and then I, start, I, I knew that it should be possible or it has to be possible. So, yeah, you know, YouTube, start searching uh, how to create digital car here like this. And then I start just searching, searching. I found out augmented reality. And then I said to my professors, okay, there is this technology. Let's make uh, like the whole presentation like that. I took... Uh, projects, 3D model of my uh, colleagues or classmates and I create the app by a tutorial on YouTube and we present it like that. We save a lot of time, we save a lot of money because like each model cost, for example, 40,000 check rounds. So we save a lot of money and then by this money we buy virtual reality headsets and so on and yeah, I start playing with them you know at first it was games and then I started like pushing the boundaries and trying why well, we should do things like this like that and you know it just starts sculpting something bigger and most of the time it was just by trying learning failing 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 uh, so yeah, that's basically how I learn everything. YouTube tutorials, YouTube tutorials. So we have another one, yeah. Uh, are the things you are design uh, finished uh, products or do you create uh, demos, prototypes? Uh, do you work together with others so like artists, programmers, researchers? How did you get into project or collaboration with big brands like Adidas? What app did you use to sculpt on your mobile phone? So that's uh, one together. Mostly time I'm trying to be, like my, my product should, should be a finished product. Yeah, I don't want it to create demo. Sometimes I do uh, as, uh, for example, the navigation inside the school, the AR one, which will track you to door was just how it should be working, but everything else was like f working mobile app. Also f the Adidas one was like working app. Uh, yeah, it's for the architecture was uh, working up. I'm trying to make it like final product because right now I'm working as a freelancer and most of the time I'm selling these like f mobile apps. This So I'm trying to make the whole package, the whole like final products, giving them here on App Store you can download it and it's yours. Uh, so this is the first question. Second one was if I'm cooperate with uh, Arquis or uh, programmers, designers. Uh, I'm type of guy which uh, wanted to make everything by his own. <laughs> so most of the time I'm doing everything by myself. Yeah, I taught a lot of skills from like 3D modeling. Yeah, 3D modeling was uh, my main thing because of uh, like industrial design yeah, we have to everything 3d modeled so i get really good at 3d modeling and then i start using it for like other skills uh, at first i was cooperating or sometimes i'm still doing cooperating with programmers or one programmer uh, but right now i'm trying to be more independent so I'm programming it by myself and yeah, just by watching YouTube videos and uh, C sharp programming. So right now I'm programming it by myself. Uh, and that's, that's also because when you 
uh, like the more you saw into professions, for example, the programming, you you can imagine like much more solutions for like problem solving, and it gives you like flexibility of like problem solving, which is necessary for designer. And the cooperation, yeah, the, the Adidas one, it wasn't for Adidas, it was a for brand which is doing like, uh, which is doing uh, logos on t-shirts or which are implementing uh, branding or on everything, on cars, you know, and they are doing the labels basically. And I was trying, trying to show them uh, like the next step of branding that it shouldn't be only like buying new CNC sewing machine but it they could put it on another level so this was is it all or this is what yeah the, the app the app yeah the the mobile app it's called the nomad 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 sculpt but you can also uh, find it uh, on uh, in a browser and it's called sculpt sculpt gl i think it's like that sculpt uh, yeah when you type sculpt gl you can find the browser one but uh, in an app store or uh, google play you can find it as nomad sculpt Okay, that's all. Another question, if there is. So I'm wondering about the research with the product where the user gathers likes and gets a response. That was the dildo. Uh, I'm wondering, is the product tested on both men and females? Is it used in real life? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the product was just a showcase. It didn't exist. and. Yeah, I also didn't want it to exist. It was just a reflection of, of modern science, of modern society. So I even don't want it to be like real and show the problematics, how uh, people getting addicted on social media or on internet on on their like mobile phones, and also uh, in the future should be a problem because right now you can uh, check out uh, in Asia, for example, in Japan how like social interactions get in worse and worse and you know, males guys are buying you know gadgets which is like their female partners life partners like digital life partners and uh, this is like the next the step like really big step into it getting like enjoying likes enjoying like, digital impulse <laughs> So it wasn't tested, it's, it didn't exist, it's just a uh, manifest. So another one, we have a few more here. Yeah. So what are your favorite applications uh, for VR and which one is the easiest uh, in your opinion? opinion? Are they free? Uh, if you mean for like creating this kind of stuff which I'm doing, um, this mobile app are created basically in uh, game engines like Unreal Engine, Engine or Unity. Uh, I'm using Unity because of easier like programming. You program in C Sharp in Unreal Studio. You program in C++, which is like really hard. But also you can. Yeah, but I wouldn't go into like further details. But yeah, Unity will be start. I will recommend try Unity, it's a game engine, and then you are also creating virtual reality or even normal games, like the the VR stand was only a game inside a tablet and it works on a, with a gyroscope. And yeah, you are able also, everything what you saw create inside the Unity. Uh, if you wanted to just jump into it and try what I saw, it's called uh, Spark AR, which is the Facebook Facebook uh, like software where you are able to create the filters and publish them to social media to people wi like wide range of users and try it if it works. So this will be the first step. And also <laughs> you know, buying VR gear like headset, try it, 
try it and then you can find out how you would implement it into like your your workflow you can 3d model it inside VR like the easiest way how to do it just put glasses on and start creating inside VR for VR and that's that would be the start okay next one it it looks like we will have to uh, conduct some workshop with you because uh, uh, other questions are related to it. Uh, is programming a requirement to getting started uh, or progressing further in AR? And we have two nodes also that Unity and Spark AR are uh, free uh, for students. Yeah, and I think that the course should be, should be, uh... It uh, could be a deal. We can make arrange something like that. Uh, if, for example, for a Spark Studio, uh, and the second question was if it's necessary to 3D program. Not mm, the first time I jump into like augmented reality. It's five years ago. I think I, I don't know anything about programming. I don't know any language. I think that still I don't know anything. I just know a few, a little, but you, you don't need. Even for Unity, just try and fail, try and fail, and you will, you will. There is a lot of people who are sharing their codes, and you are able to copy the, uh, copy them and paste it into your projects. You'll find out on YouTube. I, you'll basically learn to code at start by just following the tutorial where somebody is typing something you don't understand but more you doing it the more you start understanding what he's typing and what the syntax between the code and like the real thing which you are doing in a, in in unity for example yeah so you don't need to know anything about uh, programming to start doing your own game we have few questions from Facebook, so I will start with the first one. Uh, why you do? Why you think uh, there is no space for innovation in automotive design? Isn't good time for innovation right now? When is uh, important price and also ecology problems, etc.? When do you think uh, will be better times than today? With smiling. <laughs> I think it will be someone from maybe uh, at our studio, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I didn't say that it's not a room in uh, automotive design. I said that mostly time there is no, no room in industrial design at all. I, I speak about it globally because yeah, what I said, because of money, because of no time. Yeah, maybe I'm lying. It's not true for like globally industrial design, but here in Czech Republic, definitely is because there is no so much uh, brand which are doing their own product which will need their own design. And if there is some, they just took a Chinese components and said, okay, this is a competition. They are doing it like this. We wanted to make it little bit different but cheaper you know and this cut down all of the innovations but uh, about the automotive uh, I don't like cars so much that's why I still don't owe uh, a driving license because I'm thinking that the future is public transportation uh, and also it's because automotive industry doing like one car after another, it, they just release a car and three months after they are doing facelift and what the fuck is facelift, you know? It's definitely not innovation, like facelift is the dumbest uh, industrial design product which exists. And yeah, for sure there is room for in, uh, innovation in car industry, especially a big one car didn't change for the whole de decade, like nothing changed. There is a lot of room for innovation, but I don't know. There is a lot of uh, like really good guys also from our studio, which should change it, push 
push into car industry. Yeah, but mostly time, uh, the designers aren't changing the product because uh, there is someone on top of them which are saying, okay, right now SUVs are the main thing we have to focus. Okay, it should be for this kind of people. Okay, this is what they wanted to have and you get all those like limitation or boundaries, it gets to designer and you have to, you know, fit inside because of, and it's really hard to change things. Maybe that's why from a, like designer view of point to make it, to create some innovation. So maybe that's the answer. So there are uh, two practical questions. So one is uh, if the Pexeso app uh, is still available somewhere to download. Mm -hmm. And second one is, uh, if you have uh, somewhere on the internet your portfolio? Uh, okay, the mobile app, I was uh, at Umprum right now, like this year I was at Umprum as, uh, uh, as uh, employee yeah, and I was continuing to finish my app and right now, yeah, it's also on App Store and also on, uh, on Google Play. It it's called the Zoom Proom, Z, Z Zoom Proom, like Zoom. Right now you are Zoom Proom, uh, and you can try it, but you will need the the paper, the paper markers for it. And I'm thinking that I will publish it somewhere. But main, I, mainly the app should be for students which came to school, and there will be free. Uh, yeah, free Pexeso, free fa free matching game. And the second question, yeah, shame on me. My web page is just uh, you know broken, and I still didn't get there to like finish my web portfolio. But uh, I'm putting like fresh news and everything on my Instagram, which maybe I will. Uh, I don't know if I'm still showing my screen. Yeah, yeah. Here is my my Instagram account, which is like rosa dot m a j k l, and here is like everything I'm reacting to to news. Like like for example, a new iPhone which was released f few weeks, maybe one one week ago. And I think that everything news, like news from me, you can find for sure on, on my Instagram page. But uh, honestly, <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to finish my web portfolio. But you know, a lot of work, a lot of work. I'm working on project, and that's I think a problem of every designer or every creative to uh, make actualization on your portfolio it's really hard so shame on me but yeah, Instagram working so uh, what are you working on currently if you can uh, share it or if it's not secret yeah right now I'm working on one f uh, Instagram filter which will be uh, yeah, a kind of game also uh, again and I'm cooperating with mode globally again and uh, right now, I wanted to create my personal project because yeah, last years I was working only on on projects for someone else, and I said that I wanted to create something like personal, my own, like design-wise. And I wanted to. Or I'm already cooperating with another designer, and I'm making. I wanted to connect physical physical products uh, like vases or this kind this like porcelain type of product with augmented reality making like drawing mm. i wanted to to uh, take the final product uh, and put it to customer and also the customer to interact or finish maybe finish the the final form of the product so it will be this kind of like uh, 
connection between digital world, the final product, which somebody is buying to reinvent the, them maybe. Yeah, so that's what I'm, I don't want it to say more, but yeah, I wanted to create my personal project. So I would like to thank you, Michael. It was fantastic. Uh, I really loved the part where you showed how quickly uh, it could be done. And uh, can you share some uh, link or some contact where people can find you and possibly ask uh, other questions if they were shy or didn't know what to ask today? Yeah, I will put it uh, maybe on a Facebook page right under the the stream on the event. Yeah, maybe I should put it right now. So. Uh, it's, it's like, ah, uh, easiest way, lazy one. <laughs> Should I comment discussion? Oh, hoo, hoo. is it possible to comment? Yeah. 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 I'll like this. Yeah, so the link for Instagram, I'm also communicate here, so if you have any questions, I could answer it later. You can ask me whatever you want. Yeah. I hope you like it. I hope that my English wasn't total trash because I wasn't <laughs> speaking English for a while. Yeah, it's for, yeah, for a long time, <laughs> to be honest. So for also for me, it was nice to... Uh, to put myself into uh, not the easiest position <laughs> as a speaker. So, yeah, also thank you for your questions. I hope you like it. We'll, yeah, maybe we'll meet on some workshop personally, hopefully, personally. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Bye. <laughs>